Hello and welcome to Cabal of Adam. We are in our Zechariah class. And for those of you who are non-Jews in Torah, this is a, a very exciting class for you. Um, and for the Jews who are in Torah, you will know what's coming. All right? It's glorious. It's glorious for, for both. Um, it's very exciting. And we're coming up on <clears throat> Passover, Pesach, this weekend on this Shabbat, actually, on Friday. And it's funny how the front side and back side line up sometimes. And the Easter holiday season is on the, is on the same time. <clears throat> and it's, it's such a great time to understand front side and back side. The Akharim versus uh, the Tikkun or the or the Kedusha, the holiness. So, for those observing Pesach, all week you're getting rid of everything that rises in your house, mm -hmm. right? Everything that rises, and on the back side, it's all about resurrection. It's all about rising, <laughs> right? It's it's well, they call it a dichotomy. It, it, it's, it's the exact opposite. So if you ever want to know if what you're doing is right or wrong, if God says this is what you do and you do just the opposite, well, that tells you everything you need to know. So it's that 180 rule we always call it. It's the 180 rule, you know. <clears throat> and so as we go through here today, there may be a few things I can point out that will explain some of that. But I can tell you this, this one's going to be special. It's going to be special. So let's say our prayer and get rolling. I am just going to stay in Ravali today. So, um, and after class, uh, you know, we can, we can talk about, there's a, there's a part in here about discussing Behemoth versus Leviathan. I thought about doing a class. We're not going to have class next week on Passover week. So we're, we're going to take off next week. But the following week, I thought about doing a big class on Behemoth, and uh, you will see why. You will see why. Ruler of the universe and master of all masters, Father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling, that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor? This is the reason we plead before you that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins and they should not bring separation between you and us. And may it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken, prepare our hearts, to love and revere you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden side of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as aroma of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. May their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study. And by their merit, enlighten our eyes and our learning as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel, open my eyes so that I'll see wonders from your Torah. It says in Psalms 119.18. Because from his mouth God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. And that is Psalm 1915. All right, let's do this. So if you would, open your Tanakh up to Zechariah. Zechariah. And we left at verse 15 in chapter 1. And it talked about, I am wrathful and great wrath against the complicit nations who I have become slightly wrathful and augmented with evil. And re remember we talked about uh, the Klepas' ability to jump onto Israel. If Israel deals with them and Israel lets them in and they assimilate with them, the Klepa gets on them. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, remember that? That whole deal? Um, and from last week's class, I hope everybody remembers Noga. Because Noga is the name of the game when it comes to the nations. It really shouldn't be called Noahide. It should be called Nogahide, <laughs> right? So 
that is, uh, remember your 11 and, and all the different things that we went through. I drew a little bit on the board because everything we went over last week, and I know it was a lot of information, was preparation, language, terminology for this class because it deals with the non-Jew and the Jew alike. So let's read verse 16 and we will go through all of it. Therefore, we, whenever the Torah says therefore, we need to ask ourselves, why is therefore therefore? Okay? Therefore, thus says Hashem, I have returned to Jerusalem in mercy. My temple will be built in it. The word of Hashem, master of legions. A plumb line will be stretched out over Jerusalem. So here's what Ravali says. And the matter in which they said in support, therefore, thus said Hashem, I have returned to Jerusalem in mercy. For the will is the will in this was that Hashem, blessed be he, was that he wanted to do with Israel the opposite of the aim of the Hitzonim, the outside forces. Now we know the Hitzonim as Esau and Erav and all those nations, all those forces, be it physicality and spirituality, that have attacked Israel for almost 6,000 years, call it, okay? As here, they, the Hitzonim, thought to make din, heavy din, judgment upon Israel, upon them. And in contrast, Hashem, blessed be he, was aroused to return to them, to Israel, in the mita, in the trait of rachamim, which is mercy. As it was aroused by the Moloch, by the angel that serves in this Mita trait, the angel of Rakami. Mamish, literally, precisely. That is to say, and there is no therefore except in the language of an oath. So what the therefore is therefore is Hashem has made an oath previously to the children of Israel that all this would happen. And there's a, Russell, what's that, what's that, uh, there's a piece where the, the man made an oath that if that he would sacrifice his child, the Christians bring it up about human sacrifice all the time. Yeah, and they true. say, see, the blood atoned because he killed his own daughter. And the fact of the matter is, it was about an oath and a vow. It's it, not, about, not about the blood. It's not about the blood, it's about, about the, the oath. oath and the vow. But that's just one of the things they get wrong. Yeah, that's just one thing. But, <laughs> but that's what therefore is there for. Okay? Because this was about the oath. As he had made an oath to return, and he was aroused, and to complete the perfect union, zivu, of face-to-face, panim -face, panim, face within face within face, through his return, which is the secret of Beth, the house, temple as is known and in this secret it is written my temple will be built in her it does not say in it it and, and it literally says in her the Shachim Jerusalem the word of Hashem Tzavah and in this matter they said at the end Mamish and a plumb line, mom, it's literally, precisely, right? A plumb line will be stretched over Jerusalem. Now, when you think of it, you say, oh, okay, he's going to take a measuring tape and he's going to pull it out over <laughs> Jerusalem. No, he's going to pull it out. If this is Jerusalem, he's going to pull it out over Jerusalem. The secret is, according to what I have explained previously, as the cob, the plumb line that is mentioned in, in every place is the secret of the six, 106 lights, the cob. So remember last week, 
I went into great detail about the cob entering the Simpson. Mm -hmm. So the life that's going to come from Hashem, the cob is now going to penetrate through all the way to the Malkut down here. Right? And I've already drawn the soul levels and the nephesh, which is the noga, and on the good half of noga is connected, which will be the, the nephesh of the kadusha, and the bad half is connected to the cleaver, the four cleavers, right? So I kind of drew that down here again. So the noga is surrounding the malchut, which is Jerusalem, which is the shechinah, etc. All right. which is the temple. Now this cob that comes out of Bina, and I'll explain that here in a second, it comes out of Bina to Zun, to Zah and Nukva, to need their building and to uh, dis distribute it in the secret, in the sowed, of stone upon stone. Remember when we read in Haggai, stone upon stone was Gan Elohim, Gan Havoyah, the secret of the Gan. Remember, stone was Gematria 50, the Gan and stone was Gematria 53. So 53 and 53 is 106. These are the lights that are coming out and are going to be dis distributed between Zah and Nook, which is known as stone upon stone. And the two times gone, as I have explained, in Haggai. But certainly you already know that all the lights that come out of Bina are placed into Zeranpin at the start, into the six, into Adam, into Israel, to start with at the beginning. And afterwards, he dis distributes them, distributes them to his nukva. And all this is uh, is precisely so that there will be a union, a zivu, and the complaining which divides them is over and gone. So when this happens, all all of the problems, you know, God, when you come in, God, all that's going to be gone. It's going to be over when this happens. So turn to Song of Songs. See, Song of Songs is the love story about, is the final love story about the return. Mm -hmm. Song of Songs, chapter 2, and verse 11. For the winter of bondage has passed, and the the deluge of suffering is over and gone. And you know, you can read this, verse 12. The, but that's the suffering over and gone is the peace I wanted you to know. And the righteous bloom, blossom, and they are seen in the land. Okay? So, that's where it's headed. But there is the klepa that is in the middle, as we've discussed. It's kind of blocking it off, right? There's the klepa that is in the middle that spreads out and prevents this union and draws down the lights to suck it out. Remember, that's why I said last week about the hitzonim that suck from her, okay? Mm -hmm. Like a parasite, like a leech. The leech cries, give, give, as it says in Psalms, right? So the remaining lights themselves above and their roots do not spread out below. This was the whole secret of the angel Pura at Purim was stopping the lights. Well, guess what? The angel of Esau is doing it now. And this is the secret of the plumb line, the cob of the Simpson, that is stretched out over Jerusalem as they are the six, 106 lights as mentioned that spread out to the nook at the time of her tikkun, of her redemption, which was not possible before at the time of the damage to her. Because of the reason we have said, because of the hitzonim, right? 
And here is precisely what is written. A plumb line. It actually says in Hebrew, her plumb line. Hmm. The hay is, is on the end of Hashem. So if you will look in your Tanakh, Right here, you, you'll see a, a bracket with a box, mm -hmm. and the word right before it is a vav, kav, hey. Vav, kav, and it words kav, hey. So the plumb line is going from the vav, and the, and the kav is the plumb line, going to the hey. And then, but they say, you read it, like this, cop, plumb line. Mm -hmm. All right? So, and it's right after the Havaya, right there. Mm -hmm. And the plumb line is going to the A. The plumb line, so let's draw it so everybody can get a good, good picture. So, what happens is, as you see, I have drawn this, is, this would be the hay, and this is the vav. And this is the yud, this is yud hay, right? And this is the tip of the yud. Let's use the letters, okay? As you can see, I've drawn how the klepa, klepa encircles the hay. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. See it good, Russell? Yeah. Okay. And that's in malchut. This is the malchut, that's correct. The malchut is the mem, right? So, this klepa is blocking the shepa that's coming down. So the Shepa basically goes like this. Now, I'm making an L, but these are in union together right here. Okay, so it's really just a straight line. But for the sake of this, to see how it goes. And then from Bina, it crowns Zah, like it says on uh, um, Solomon, and on the day his mother crowned him, he got his mochim back, his brain back, right? The mochim. So... Then, you, you know, it's going to go ahead and fair. Once it gets to your sewed, it's going to come down. And the lights are going to penetrate Israel, Jerusalem, the whole thing. Now, this is, this, is, this is going to be the head, this is going to be the body, and this is going to be the female attribute of her. Okay, because we're going to get into Ju to Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem here in, in the next piece. All right? So, so the light is going to come down and it's being blocked, but it's not going to be blocked anymore. And that's when it's going to hit. All right? And as you see here, I have the Noga that's attaching. So this is this will be Or Penimi, the inner light, and this will be what's called Or Makif, the surrounding light. Okay? Straight light, curve light. Yosher Aguli, back on our chart. You know, the straight light and the curve light. Straight light, curve light. This is Messiah ben Joseph, Messiah ben David, the twin messiahs. Leviathan, and I created Leviathan to sport with. Okay. Now we just have to figure out what behemoth is. That's why I said that. Okay. So, it literally reads, the, the plumb line literally reads, the cob to the hay. The, the straight light to the hay. That is Hashem. The 106 lights of Hashem. But everything rises and ascends well from what we have explained as this alludes to the 106 lights of the Kav as mentioned that come out from Hashem on high and go to below from the greater Metatron to the lesser, the, Metatron. The lesser Metatron the secret of the supernal lights and it goes to the Kav as, as the Kav to the Vav to the Vav of Hashem, from Hashem 
through the Kav to Zeranpin. And this is the secret of the plumb line of Hashem that will be stretched out over Jerusalem. As it is the secret of Hashem below, Adonai, the lesser Havaya, right? The aspect of Hashem above, the aspect of Hashem below, the Nukva. Who receives the Kav, the plumb line, that is stretched out over her in the secret of Hashem above, the greater Metatron, as we have explained. Now, let's read, read that again, and we'll go on to 17. Therefore, thus said Hashem, I have returned to Jerusalem in mercy, Rakami. My temple will be built in her. I'm reading it as it's actually translated, corrected. The word of Hashem, Master of Legion. See, there's the Zah part. There's the, there's the Naki part. And a plumb line will be stretched out over Jerusalem. So we have the upper plumb line and to the lower. Now, verse 17. Call out again, saying, Thus said Hashem, Master of Legions, My cities will be once again spread out with bounty. Hashem will have mercy on Zion once again. And he will choose Jerusalem once again. So we see... What, uh, a, once again there, or a, the word again, four times. There's your Havaya, right? So Rabbi says, and that which is written afterwards, call out again, the word again is ode. This is the secret of the pledge and the promise about the future revelation, as they said, they will spread out, i.e. the cities, from the suffering and oppression to the outside as God's goodness that comes from Yesod or out of Yesod to Malchut, like I, like I just drew. This is going gonna, gonna to come out of Yesod to Malchut. This is the secret of that goodness that's coming. He's going to do it again, right? Because he promised he would. Now, he had done it before. He did it during Solomon's time. He did it during Moses' time. Right? He's gonna. He's he's never not gonna do it. <coughs> and this will cause an increase. So much so that one cannot stand up close, or it be stopped up. He's gonna blow blow out the heats on him. They cannot stand, close it up amid, among, or inside it. And it goes outside to the spring, to the wellspring, right? The wellspring. These are the, what is the wellspring? The nukfa, the malkut. The word spring, as in wellspring, is ayin, which is gematria 70. Each, if you take the word ayin, and you spell it out. It's ayin yud nun. Ayin yud nun is 130. That's how many years Adam was in the river. That's how many years Jacob lived. Mm -hmm. So spring is ayin 70. But the word ayin in itself, if you if you do the expand expansion of the word is 130. So the 130 is intrinsically connected with 70. That's important for the 70 nations. And it is an example of the vessel that is, that is full to its brim. And this is the reason why a full cup of wine, 70, is needed for a blessing after meals to allude to the future goodness and the secret that is in Proverbs 3.10. So look at Proverbs 3.10. Proverbs.
Then your storehouses will be filled with plenty and the wine of your vats will burst forth. And I love verse one. My child, do not forget my Torah. <laughs> For the word vats, remember the vats? Yekev, the wine press, is 112. Remember that whole 112 thing we did a few classes back? And from this you will understand that there is no gelui, uh, a revelation, drawn down except to the many as the matter is said in Isaiah 45, verse 5. So, so the 40, verse 5. So turn to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40 and verse 5. And the glory of Hashem will be revealed. And all flesh together will see that the mouth of Hashem has spoken. So even though the heats of Neem are still going to be around, when this happens, everybody on this globe is going to see it. And it's going to be a day of reckoning. All right? And I will explain what it will even look like. And surely, certainly, that the yesod of the male unites with the yesod of the nook at the point of her interior, of her inside, of her penini, as she is the secret of Zion. And this is what is written, Hashem will have mercy on Zion once again. Now, it says... Uh, if you look right here, you will see the word et. Do you see it there, Brandon? Mm -hmm. And the next word is Zion. Now, the et particle, et particle is like a directive. Mm -hmm. You know, that et, it's really saying this. this is it, the Zion. It's kind of a very directive, all right? There is not an et particle before Jerusalem, which is the next word. There is a bet in front of the word Jerusalem. Because bet is the inside, the house, the temple. The bet, the house in Jerusalem, which is Zion. So that's, Zion is the holy of holies. And here, the Yesod, the Yesod, this entire Kav that goes through Yesod is called Menachem. Menachem. Do we know anybody named Menachem? That is none other than Noah. For Ravali says that the comforter, the one that brings rest, is the Mashiach, whose name is Menachem, Menachem, Noah. Now, Mim, Mim, the Malchut of Imabina, the Malchut of of Malchut, Leah, Rachel. Forty days, forty nights. Noah and Moses both did that. Because Noah is this, six, seven, six, seven. Who entered the ark? Who entered the Malchut? Noah. Does, does God not have a pattern? So why do all, now you know why I said all of the non-Jews cannot get rid of the word Noah. They gotta be Noahides. And that's why. Because 
That is the name of Mashiach. Now, what is Noah backwards? Grace. The Christians can't get away from grace. That's the backside. That's the backside. <laughs> Chain. They can't get away from it. Why? Because their soul knows exactly that God found grace in Noah. And you're saved by grace. Say, you read it the other way. You're saved by Noah. See, there's truth in what they're saying. They just twist it. All right? So the whole seven laws is a fact. That's The Jews had seven laws until they got to tomorrow out of, after Pesach. Mm -hmm. That's all they had. That's Torah A. Mm -hmm. Right? So that ought to be a truth bomb for everybody. And the matter which they said at the end of the verse, and he will choose Jerusalem once again, i.e. in it. And here's a difficulty. What is the what is the relevant to the matter of the uh, the kara, the choosing? What is the relevance of this choosing? Because he keeps talking about it. And surely there is no choosing except in the place of choice, i.e., the choice place chosen he's chosen it and rejected it you know he turned uh, you know exile oh, I'm bringing you back I exile I'm, you know he keeps choosing it over and over and surely Jerusalem was already chosen by the eternal choice and what was uh, relevant was the choice was to renew and to restore her once again but it is, but it is need to be. It needs to be precise about the language that is used. Therefore, it says, "And he will choose in Jerusalem once again." And it does not say that he will choose at the at particle Jerusalem once again, but at Zion specific. And it does not. Uh, once again, and the secret is because of the, the damage to Israel, they were assembled on the outside, the exterior of the Nukva that is called Jerusalem. So turn to Numbers 5 2. Numbers 5 2. And command the children of Israel that they shall expel from camp everyone with sorrow. Mm. Uh oh, affliction. Everyone who has a tzav, a emission, and everyone that is contaminated by a human corpse. All the klipa, you've got to expel it. Because it does damage to the inside. It's unholy. Right? Mm -hmm. Male and female alike, you shall expel to the outside of the camp. And in the time of her tacoon, the supernal one selected and wanted to make a choice that restored all the neat soaked sparks. Uh oh. He's not only going to fix Israel, Jerusalem, and Zion, right? But he's going to restore all of the nitzotso, all the whole, all the sparks. Well, where are they? In the nations. In the nations. To see who would be fitting and deserve to stand in her. And who would be rejected and expelled away from her like I just read he's 
Let's use it the proverbial separating the wheat from the chaff. Well, who are these wheat? We just has it, right? As it said in Job 38, 13. So turn to Job. Thirty-eight, thirteen. To grasp the edge of the earth, the nukva, and shake the wicked from it. Now, if you remember last week in our studies, I talked about the depths of the sea. Remember in the Cleveland. And the other one called the shadow of death of the Klepa. If you'll read verse 16, have you penetrated the hidden depths of the sea or gone to the plum, the cod, the deep? 17, were the gates of death revealed to you? Have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? He's talking about, he's going into the Klepa, right? Mm -hmm. But here's something very, very interesting. If you will look in both of the where the word wicked is in 13 and in verse 15, you'll see as the light is withheld from the wicked. If you will look in the Torah, I have circled it. Both of those words right there are, are the word for wicked. They both have a floating iron. What is concealed in the wicked? Who is the floating iron? Asaph. Which part of Asaph? His head, the mohin of Asaph. The holy head of Asaph is the floating iron. We know this in Psalms 80, 14. Mm -hmm. There it is right there in Job, where we see the floating iron. Mm-mm-mm that is concealed with the wicked in the klepa of the depths of the sea and the shadow of death that I went over eg extremely deep last week and that's why I did it and so that's the but that's the that's the Sheffi you're talking about isn't it? that's the Nitsuts the, the sparks in the klepa that's correct. in there that's correct that's correct which is what it would call, we would say it's the holy head of Asa. That's correct. That would be the Gary. Okay. Or the Noga hides. <laughs> okay? And that is the last beaver, the last extraction, Rob Bali says. And it is what establishes the nukfa. What establishes the nukfa? Bringing back the nitsots that are trapped. In the klipa uh -huh. is what establishes the nukfa. Uh -huh. So that's the gearing the nations, basically. Bingo. And it builds her to perfection and completion, which is the secret written in Psalms 87, verse 5. So now turn to Psalms 87 and 5. I told you, if you're a non-Jew, this is the class for you. Eighty-seven, five. But of Zion it can be said, man after man was born in her. Man after man. Adam and Ish. The inside and the outside. Man after man was born in her. As he, the Most High, maintains her thus, Hashem will count and he records the nations. Hashem knows. Okay? And this is the secret of he will choose in Jerusalem again, in her, man <coughs> after man. And that is well understood from the secret 
as is said. Now, let's go back and read the last verse. Call out again. Now, he just stretched the, stretched the plumb line over Jerusalem. Basically, beyond Jerusalem. Call out again, saying, Thus said Hashem, Master of Legions, My cities will once again spread out with the bounty. Hashem will have mercy on Zion once again, and he will choose Jerusalem once again. It literally says he will choose in who's in Jerusalem once again. Chapter 2. And I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, four horns. And I said to the angel who was speaking in me, What are these? And he said to me, These are the horns that disperse Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Here I have already explained previously the matters. Uh, that he will again choose Jerusalem in Jeremiah 117, the last verse. Because Hashem, blessed be he, wants to choose among all the Nitzots, that's important, of the Nukva female that are in her, to make a selection, a choice from them, to know who will be gathered and who will be rejected. And according to this, we will know his will by the selection, the choosing to reject them completely in the secret of, the, of their chariot with horses. Remember, we have the, the man riding on the, on the horses. That was, that was the chariot of the Klepa, right? Because this is the chariot of the, of the bad, of the klipa, of the impurity, of the masabuta. And they are the secret of the four names, the, the, prince, the, the, the principal ones. They are in, the first one is uh, shachal. This is the large lion. Number two, the fetin, the viper. Number three, the kefir, the young lion. And number four, the tanin, the serpent. As they are the secret of the four horns that are alluded to in support of this vision. As they would, uh, as here, it would be impossible in any case to raise the horns of Kedusha, holiness, if it were not be for the chastising of the horns of the klepa at the start that grasp a hold of her. Turn to Psalm 91. So he's, so he's explaining who these four horns are. So go to Psalm 91. Thirteen. These are your four horns, and upon the lion, and a, and the viper you will tread, and you will trample the young lion and the serpent. I like fourteen two. I underlined it, for he has yearned for me, and I will deliver him. I will elevate him because he knows my name. These are the four horns. And they grab hold of her, as the matter is said in Psalm 75, 11. So turn to Psalm 75. Eleven. And the word pride here, in the Hebrew is horns, not pride. Mm. And it says, I shall cut down all the horns of the wicked and the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Mm. 
as it says, I shall cut off the horns of the wicked, and afterwards the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. And this, without that, would be impossible without a doubt. In the secret of, as this one rises, this one falls. There's a midrash in Genesis 25, 23 about Rebekah when she's talking about Jacob and Esau, the two nations mm -hmm. in her belly. And we've, we've gone over the secrets of that at length. But there's a part of it where when this one rises, this one falls. So in Esau, when the church rises, it, Jacob, Israel, Judaism falls. And when Judaism rises, that one's going to fall. But he's going to cut the horns off. The horns are going to be the four clepas. Let me let me see if I uh, think. Uh, the four horns of dispersion are the four kingdoms that afflicted the Jewish people: Babylonia, Media Persia. Greek and Rome. Okay, mm -hmm. so he's going to do get. He's going to get those SARS. Mm -hmm. Now, the sages. Uh, I, I need to cover this. This was all, uh, from. Uh, oh, I can wait on that one. I believe. So, uh, as I wrote here, you have. Before, so the Yechida here, the head of the thing, we don't count, just like we don't count Egypt, right? So you have the Haya, this is the four Klippa, the Haya and the Shaman, the Ruach, that are, that are total Klippa. So this is Babylon, Media, Persia, Greek. And then the Roman, because Rome is Esau, there's a part of Esau that is good. It's called the head of the seventy. There's part of Esau that is bad, called the body. Right? So this is Rome. And but these are the four horns of the backside of the Klepa. And what's going to be left is going to be the Holy Noga, the Holy Nitzos. He's right now Hashem is choosing the holy from the nations, from the floating 70. Let's read uh, verse 2, two one again. And I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, four horns. And I said to the angel who was speaking in me, What are these? And he said to me, These are the horns that dispersed Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Verse 3. Then Hashem showed me four carpenters, and I asked, what are they coming to do? And he spoke, saying, These horns that dispersed Judah, humiliating them until no man could raise his head. So these carpenters, I have come to terrify them and cast down the horns of the nations who raise a horn against the, the land of Judah and disperse it. And those were the four horns of the Klippa. They were already grasping the four horns of the holy altar, the Mahu. And they were surrounding on every level and elevation by the Kedusha holiness. And this is the matter that the prophet, the Navi, asked the Malik that was speaking within him. And I said to the Malik, who was speaking in me. And the Moloch replied that they were the secrets of the four levels of impurity that were grasping on to every level of Kedusha. And this is the secret. And he said to me that these are the horns of the dispersions because it says et Judah, et Israel, but it doesn't say et Jerusalem now. Because they just, he's talking about these specific things precisely in the language of 
Exodus 25, 11. So turn to Exodus 25, verse 11. You shall cover it with pure gold from within it and from without you shall cover it and you shall make on it a gold crown all around. And so what he's talking about is the gold crown all around. They're, they're holding on to the gold crown all around. And also in verse 24, look down there, you shall cover it with pure gold and you shall make for it a gold crown all around. A gold crown all around at Judah because Judah is the head. At Israel because Israel is the vak, the six, six extremities. Judah, Israel, Jerusalem, Zion. Okay? In Jerusalem, she is the secret of the Malchut. We find that they were surrounding every level of Kedusha completely. And it was necessary to expel them, to drive them out, in order to build the holy building to perfection and completion. So look what Rabbi is saying. What they're going to have to do, what they're not, Israel's not going to have to do it, Hashem's going to do it. They're going to drive out everybody in the land of Israel that is not Judah or Israel. Mamish. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And those are going to be the four angels that take care of that, right? These are the carpenters. Let me see if I... Uh, yeah. The sages explain the verse referring to the events that will take place in the advent of Mashiach. The four craftsmen, craftsmen Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David, Eliyahu the prophet, and the, and the Kohen Tzedek in Sukkot 52b. That's uh, uh, Sukkot 52 is... Uh, the twin messiahs. <laughs> the two messiahs are depicted as craftsmen because they will rebuild the temple. Eliyahu is present because the altar he built upon Mount Carmel. And the coincetic is none other than Shem, the son of Noah, who is referred to as Malkitzedek. He is described as the craftsman because he assisted Noah, Menachem, in building the ark. These four craftsmen will destroy the might of the four kingdoms described above when the latter will join forces together and the, they will attack the Jewish nation in the land of Israel. All right? So... It'll be the king, the priest, Eliyahu. It'll be it'll be Sham, Sham, Malkitzedek, Metatron. It'll be the Havayah. That's the four on the front side. It'll be Hashem and all that comes with him. <laughs> and even when they see this, the nations are going to, all the nations of the world are going to attack Israel. We call that Gog Magog. Mm -hmm. Gog Magog is Gematria 70. Verse 3. Hashem then showed me the four carpenters and I asked, what are they coming to do? Um, 
Did I already read that? No. Did I? Um, oh, no. And he spoke to me saying, these are, the, these are the horns that dispersed Judah, humiliating them, until no man could raise his head. That's why we just talk about the gold crown. Till no man could raise his head. These carpenters have come forth to terrify them, cast them down. Yeah, I already read that. Uh, so let me go through it. Verse 3 in Rabbi. Therefore, Hashem showed him the four craftsmen that were placed on them to send them away and to expel them, to dump them out, those four horns of the klipa. And this is the secret of Hashem showed me four craftsmen. And I said, what are they coming to do? And indeed, there are four craftsmen. And they are the secret of the four heads of Kedusha and the secret of the Merkava, the holy chariot, and Ezekiel. To confront the chariot, the Merkava, of the backside, the Masabutra, the impurity. And the secret is this, 1 Samuel 2.8. Turn to 1 Samuel 2.8. For Hashem, for Hashem's are the pillars of the earth, and he set upon them the world. Four pillars. Mm -hmm. As they are placed on them, in any case to destroy and demolish the cleap of buildings, mm -hmm. and to build the building of Kedusha to perfection and completion. Like I've always said, you want to make the nations now mad? Tear down all the churches and tear down all the mosques over there in Israel. And you will fire them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what's going to happen. I've been saying it for years. Hashem, the, the mosques, the angels are going to do it. Mm -hmm. Good, just going to have to get glad the same shoes they get made. They're going to have to get real glad about it because it's coming. <laughs> and the four horns is mentioned in the matter are the opposite, the front side of the four corners of the earth. As the four horns of the klipa grasp onto them, and it was necessary to expel them and drive them away. In the secret, it is written in Job thirty-eight thirteen, mm -hmm. as they are literally the hitzonim, they're Ra, mm -hmm. Esau, that surmount to overcome the levels of kedusha, and it goes all the way up to Zah. They go. The, this level of impurity goes all the way up to Zah. Right? So to speak. Who was dressed and garmented in the garments of darkness through them. And standing in the aspect of the suckling of the klipa in Kotnut. The Vav, the six, decapitated without a head. And this is the secret of these four of these horns that dispersed Judah until no man could raise his head. Which is well understood from the secret as is said. And now these four craftsmen come to terrify the four horns with the power and strength of the strong Gavuro and to expel them and to drive them out from the place where they were grasping with the power and strength of the hand. We're seeing it right now <laughs> in our world. And this is the matter that is said. And these craftsmen have come to terrify them, to cast down the horns of the nations who raised the horn against the land of Judah, to cast down Mamish, as it is from the language of hand, to push and to urge with both hands. Now, I brought this little deal here. It's called, Rabbi Bax made this, it's called the Descent of the Worlds. Mm -hmm. And y'all probably seen this before, but you can see how it goes from Marika and Pim, from Abba to Ema, and the worlds of Atsilut, Berea, Yitzira, and Asiya. 
But if you look down here, there's 14 spherot hanging out down here. Because you have four from Yitzira and the 10 from Asiya. That's 14. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because the Klepa has gotten up into Zah. Mm -hmm. Right? 14 is the word Yod, which is the word hand. Mm -hmm. And there's 14 bones in your hand. So this language comes from he is going to use his hands and push them out. Because the klepa is 14, thus the hand. And he will push them out because the, the willful act to destroy the horn is to lift and to raise the head up to the head of Kedusha itself, as this is the secret of the land of Judah. The secret of the land of Judah. The head of Esau and the land of Judah. And this is the secret of who will raise a horn against the land of Judah to disperse it. Now, 206, let me see here. I read that. I believe. The angel then told Zechariah that the craftsmen represented the nations who were destined to conquer and destroy the four kingdoms who oppressed the Jewish nation. Thus, each one overthrowing its predecessor. Thus, Persia conquered Babylon, who was subsequently defeated by Greece, who, who was humbled and interned by the Romans. The four, craftsmen is, the four craftsmen is the Jewish nation who is ultimately who will ultimately destroy Rome during the Messianic times. That is Barbara now. How much time we got? Plenty. We got plenty. We're gonna get through. We're gonna get through some of this. I gotta. I gotta get through some of this because this is. We ain't even to the juicy part yet. No, oh, let's get there. Okay. Verse five. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, there was a man, and in his hand was a measuring line. And this is the matter of the lowering of the shepherd for gain or profit of the Shekhinah after the Hitzonim that could cause the delay or banished from her the Ish, the man the man was Jacob our father as he is the man mentioned riding upon the red horse in the secret that is said and now is his hand in his hand is a measuring line as this is the secret of the trait the Mita trait, Mamish. Now, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 9 says, Jacob in the measurement of his inheritance. Because he includes Zah. He is the three, the three traits, the three columns, the three Kavim, the three lines, the threefold possession. And his intention and purpose was to prepare the Nukva so that she would be worthy to receive his Shepha. Because he, Zeranpin, is the owner of the house, the temple, literally. And I asked, where are you going? And he answered me, to measure Jerusalem to see how wide its breadth and how long its length. And this is the matter that the prophet asked about. And it was said, where are you going? And the man responded to measure Jerusalem, to measure its breadth and see how long. That is to say, if the vessel will be big enough for its requirements to receive all the numerous great lights that were about to be drawn down in it. 
Verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 and he does verse 7 and 8 together. Just then the angel who was speaking to me was going forth, and another angel was going forth toward him. And he said to him, Run, speak to that young man over there, saying, Jerusalem will be settled beyond its walls because of the multitude of the people and livestock within it. And indeed, this Moloch angel that was dressed in the mouth of the prophet from his great uh, from his great desire to know the matter of the vision of the measuring line therefore he wanted to leave his garmenting his hip love shoot the light that's overlapping for the time being and go to see what it was about as in Esther 4 verse 5 to as it says in Esther 4 verse 5 to learn what this is all about and why. As it's as the same as it says in uh, verse 8 there. Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't say that in verse 8. It, it says that in Esther. Verse 8. I'm sorry, verse 8. The young the young man, the Naar. What do we know about Naar? Metatron, mm -hmm. run, run over to the young man over there saying, for the reason of the running was because there was no delay for the good news, not even for a moment. Mm -hmm. So we find it is said in 2 Samuel 18, 23. The verse says, whatever happens, let me run. And this is another reason because the prophet was a novice to prophecy. He's calling Jeremiah, Zechariah a, a novice. He's a beginner. He's a youth. He's a Naar. What is he saying? He's a Metatron. He's Metatronic. And perhaps he went immediately to tell Israel what he had seen. Scarcely before he knew the essence of the word. So he was like, oh, man, we got good news. We got to go tell everybody. And they're like, whoa, 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 run. Hold on, you know. Hold, hold up. You don't know what it's all about. And what it's all about is amazing. And they had not yet completely received their comforts because of the principle of the measurement is the matter. Because there is no blessing in respect to the measurement. According to the Moloch, the angel returned in haste to speak with him and said to him, Jerusalem will be settled beyond its walls. Why are you going to go, you know, why are you going to go measure it? It's going to be measured beyond its walls. That is to say that the matter of the measure would not be given with the limited lights, but on the contrary, to inform and to be known that this vessel was small to contain all the great chef, and therefore it would be beyond its walls and go outside them. And this is the matter of beyond its walls, as it is from the language of spreading out from, the, from, from this glory, this kavod, this great revelation that is drawn down as we have explained. And there is no kavod, no glory, except in the place of a revelation, of revealing something. And the shepherd will be completely from the holy nitzot sot sparks, and they are the secret of Adam. So there's going to be the holy nitzot sot sparks coming from Israel, for the or penimi, and also from the Nitzots of the Klippa, Nitzots of the Klippa Noga, from the good ones that are in them. And they are the secret of the Gerim. The Gerim Gururim. 
the ones that made themselves dare. They are the secret of the livestock, i.e. the behemoth. And this is what is written. Because of the abundance of Adam, the people, and the garing livestock within it. Adam Behemoth. Shame Ma 45 Adam Shame Ben 52 52 Gamatra Behemoth and they say you have an animal soul. Why don't you just call it Behemoth? <laughs> Dig. It's the secret of the Noga Gare. Watch your thumb. It is the Gare ring that he will be choosing from from the nations that will complete the structure of the outer lights. And as we, we, we're not going to have time to get there. What time is it now? 10 after. We'll, we'll, we, will, we will stop right here. We'll, we'll come back and, and cover this because this starts getting huge for the Gary. Mm. Because this is the secret of the wall of fire that surrounds Israel. And, and but it's like Noga? A lot like Noga. <laughs> <laughs> when the 106 lights hit in the Orpin Me, it radiates out. And that fire is the same fire of the burning bush that Moses spoke to. This is the light coming from Ima Bina. Echiah. I will be what I will be. I am who I am. Mm -hmm. He is who he is. Is going to be the Or Makif and the Or Pinami, the total Adamic structure reconstituted with the light of the Kav in the holy city, in Zion. Mm -hmm. And it's the Gehring that keep out the Klippa. Mm -mm. Where are you going? He answered me, to measure Jerusalem, to see how wide its breadth and how long. The word there is Kamah which we're going to learn next week. <laughs> He's seeing how many of us there is. Just then the angel who was speaking to me was going forth, and another angel going forth to where him and said to him, run and speak to that young man over there saying, Jerusalem be seven outside its walls, man. Hold on. <laughs> because of the multitude of Adam and Behemoth within it. And the next verse has 11 words in it. And the Torah is amazing, and the Saviors are amazing, and we'll be off next week for Passover week. I'll see y'all the following. <laughs> <laughs>